up here. Man, that is awesome looking. Cat 323. Yes, sir. And this is the Seamoth DAH 150E. And this is a monster of an excavator mulch. You guys thought Munchie was badass. Wait till y'all see this thing in action. Holy moly. So, inflow, outflow, and this is case strain. This thing's awesome. How many hours you got on that? I'm sorry? How many hours you got on that? Uh, on the head of the yeah. machine? Yeah, head. It's probably about 1,000, 1,200 by now. I'm nice. For like three, a little over three years. You mind if I get some some footage, mulch and everything? Awesome, man. I YouTube. But I work out here, I work, I do similar stuff, just not with equipment this big. So it. when the owner told me you guys are coming out here to do all this, I was like, I gotta come out here and film this. So these guys have been very uh, um, nice to let me film you guys do all this mulching work, so. It's a sight to see, that's for sure. Yeah, I have, I have the same setup but on a Kubota U55 with a 36 inch mulcher. Yeah. So like this, but a lot smaller, <laughs> a lot smaller. Nowhere near as powerful as this. So I'm sure all the people on YouTube that are used to seeing that thing are gonna be very curious to see the uh, mulching destruction that this thing can put up. <laughs> throw some chips. That's oh yeah. All right, cool, man. Well, let's, uh, I won't hold you up any longer. Let's, right. let's see what she'll do. So he's gonna start working on this tree line right here down this berm.
what he's doing is he's just knocking the tops off over here and he's just grinding the trees in place and then the other machine will come back by and make a pass and grind up all uh, the slash, the tops that are laying here on the ground. And he won't have to waste his time trying to grind all this stuff on the ground. And it's just to make this a lot, whole process a lot quicker and it'll save a lot of wear on the teeth. So Brooks is the operator of the 323 here, and I want you to just, because I thought this was fascinating, explain to everybody how you operate this head with the thumb button, because I thought that was really cool. All right, so, you know, you can have, like, on the big track mulchers and stuff, your all-time button, just where the head stays on. But when, yeah, constant know, flow. Constant flow. When you do that, it really slows these excavators down. It doesn't have a lot of power. Yeah. So what I'll kind of do is, when I'm going up to the tree, I'll hit the roller here, which turns on the modulated. It's just kind of like a throttle sort of thing just yeah. for the head itself. And um, so when I'm mulching, I'll turn that on, rev the head up a little bit, kind of do underbrush, and then I'll let off of it, pick the head up to a tall tree, and then I'll hit the button again and get it wound up just because the machine moves a lot faster and a lot more efficiently than if you just left the constant flow on all the time. Gotcha. That's really cool because on my on my mini excavator, I have to leave that button on full time because it's a lot less powerful machine. But mm -hmm. that mulcher head is so big and it's got so much power and momentum behind it. You just have to touch that button and then it leaves the rest of the hydraulics mm -hmm. free to move the machine around and you can move a lot faster like that. Yes, sir. That is really cool. I've never heard of anybody doing that that way. So I really wanted to explain that to people how this is much different than my little mini excavator and how it operates. So I just thought that was really cool um awesome man uh well i appreciate you letting me get some footage and talk to you yes sir
some new ones, ain't it? I told Dwayne ordered some. Yeah, no, don't get don't get too in on them. Those are worn out. Yeah. You don't want to advertise them. How how far can you go? To like about, about where we're at. Oh, that's it. They're about they're about done. Wow. Yeah. And usually they're like way longer though. See, like here, some of these are longer than the other ones, like that one right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that one's longer. got a good bit of curvature yeah, to so it. Yeah. That one is like yeah. This Usually these on this end, like I've noticed on my Moultrie, these on the on the end closest to the machine don't wear as fast as the ones out here. These yeah. ones on this end wear the fastest. It's because the vacuum. Oh. These all the these are designed the way these are set up is because they create a vacuum. That's what sucks everything up. Yeah. So there's more vacuum on the ends and in the center, and that's why it wears them out more. Okay. It pulls in more dirt. Uh, I never knew that. I never knew why that was like that. Yeah, it's all just because of vacuum. Okay, that's good to know. This thing's a monster head, man. This thing is it's super impressive. One thing I like about this is, so my Prenos, he's like, you don't have much space here between this tooth and the edge of the thing. On mine, the, the, the tooth actually ends right here, the cutter tooth, and then there's like a carbide. One of those carbides like you've got on there, right here on the edge, and there's a lot of space between the edge of that carbide. Like there's probably this much space between the edge of that carbide and the inside of the, the housing. And a lot of times stuff gets up in there and it catches in here, like right in here between the carbide and here. And you have to come in and pull it out because there's nothing there to grab it and force it back out of there. And that's the one, only drawdown drawback that I found with the design on my Prenon. And I noticed when he was mulching, he didn't have one time that that happened where something got in there and didn't get flushed back out. Do um, you guys ever get anything jammed like in between the rings? Does that ever happen? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It, I, work, it works its way out. Okay. I don't have to, it doesn't ever like vibrate the machine so bad where I got to get it out. All right, because I have to do that on mine. That's that's typically not a bigger problem as having stuff catching here, but maybe like once a job, it's worse with pines because pines are so soft and sticky. On on my rings, I get stuff stuck in my pre-noth head, you know, especially like the pines. The gums aren't too bad because the wood's too hard to get stuck in there, but but they will get stuck in here. And that's that can be a pain in the butt sometimes to get out. Only thing but, that I've, I've gotten a, a spool of cable stopped up in here. Oh yeah, I've hit some cable before, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people run those carbides on the outside because 100% yeah. of the time, that's what your outside teeth are gonna look yep. like. Like I said, that's just because that vacuum yeah. sucks up all the dirt and it's literally just sands your tooth. Mm -hmm. And that's why you end up with it being all crooked and flat and then your rest looking semi-normal. How many teeth are on this? Mine 21. has 20. It's 21. I 21 believe. on this one? I believe. 21 or 24? I think it's 21 or 24. 3, 4, 6, 8, 10. Yeah, it's 21. Okay. I thought it'd be more. My, my little 36 inch head has 20 teeth on it. Those pre has got way more teeth. Yeah. All of them have a ton of teeth. Mine's got, mine's got it for sure. I thought this one would probably have closer to 30 because it's a it's a 60 inch head. Um, I know the 60 inch Prenoth skid steer head, that 60 inch has, I think it's 30, 31, 32 teeth, something like that. So this is a this is a badass head. Another thing I've noticed is you don't have so on mine, this inside wear plate has ridges in it that when you back drag they they eat stuff up that comes that that gets you know gone back through does it have that is that yeah. Plate that yeah. Closes down. yeah mine has has ridges on the front side and on the back where when you take that stuff through there it really grinds it up as it comes through there and hits that wear plate but yeah this one's smooth but there's a you have a lot like and i think some of the reason i get more stuff caught in mine because there's a lot more space in mine between the the edge of the drum and the top of the housing in there there's a lot of space there. like i can reach my whole arm up into mine you don't have anywhere and I, i'm guessing that's probably why you don't get much stuff caught up in there it just they're so tight it just grabs it and flushes it right out of there so pretty cool design
definitely different to see because I've never been up close to one of these before to see the difference in design. So that's really neat. I love, I wish mine had this this on the back side because man, mine will throw some crap. Golly. Good thing about this, you get a limb out in the wrong spot where you can't get to it. Yeah. You close this thing down and pinch that limb mm -hmm. and drag it back out. Yeah. Yeah, all of mine has got some chains right here and little stuff, it'll stop. But it, when it chugs something big, those chains don't do a damn thing. I love it. All right, everyone. I am out of here for today. I had a great time out here uh, with these guys hanging out with Land Services Company. So much fun. I learned a lot from these guys today. Uh, just sharing different uh, tips and tricks about equipment, things that they found with certain uh, pieces of equipment they like, they don't like, different techniques. Um, just comparing different things between Prenoth and Seamoth. It's been really, really fun. Very educational for me. Uh, just very happy and, and thankful they let me come out here and hang out. I have got a ton of work still left to do out here on this project. I will be back out here week after next to do a bunch of mulching and brush cutting for the owner. We've got a ton of projects. Um, so stay tuned for that. I'm gonna try to make a whole series out of that. We're gonna have the drone out here. Uh, all the GoPros are gonna, it's gonna be crazy. We have the brush cutter, the mulcher, I'm gonna have everything out here. We're gonna have a great time. Um, so that's coming up week after next. I'm hoping to maybe come back out here one day next week. They're gonna start digging the impound, start digging everything out one day next week. They had a dozer dropped off just uh, a few hours ago. And uh, so they can start building the berms. They've got a bucket for the excavator right here. They'll swap the mulcher out for the bucket and start digging the ditch probably Monday. And I'm hoping to be back out here one day next week to catch out, catch some more stuff out here. So stay tuned. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this little two-part series with these two different machines. I'm just so, it was so much fun being out here today with these guys. So, um, and I will catch you guys on the next video. More to come, stay tuned. And if you like this stuff, you guys uh, know where to hit the button to check out more stuff. I'll catch you guys later. Bye, everybody.